about gamification and serious game. This is uh, the team at Centrum, it's an interdisciplinary team. Some of us are in political science, some are in computer science, and some are at the school. Uh, so what is Empathy? Empathy is a family of uh, hybrid product playing game. By hybrid, I mean that they have a technological component, they're a size of the internet. Uh, the first generation was developed in Horizon 2020 called Empathia. I was a postdoc at the time. I had designed uh, the Trojan 2015. And uh, now we want another Horizon, so we restarted the project. But the project is for a generalist uh, sort of uh, game, uh, and instead I wanted to focus uh, the game on the UK and on uh, green spaces, and that's what the grant allowed me to do, basically a localization of the game. Also the technological part is very expensive, so the grant would have never allowed me to develop the game, but it allowed me to build content. So these were the objectives of the grants to localize the game in the UK and on green issues, um, to update the game rules on the basis of a proper sort of uh, collaboration with game designer, because the original game creator were political scientists, and so we stumbled on a game that was fun to play, but we were not experts of games. And so this time, the collaboration with Richard and Vanessa, instead, we found people that really study and know how to improve uh, games. And also, the original version of the game was a dissemination asset for a grant. It didn't have any research attached to it. So this grant allowed me to actually build a research agenda. And then we wanted to launch the game in the UK in the same way. So these were the objectives. Um, so what's the game about? The game is a simulation of a participatory budgeting. I don't know how familiar you are with the terminology. Uh, so participatory budgeting process. <coughs> is a process in which a city or a region or a, or a state uh, devotes a certain amount of money and the citizens are invited to provide ideas, uh, then uh, they're invited to convince other citizens to support their ideas, and then there is a referendum. Uh, the sort of uh, historical initiator of these processes was the city of Porto Alegre in Brazil that became globally famous uh, for it. Now there are more than 15,000 participatory budgeting around the world. In Europe, the most famous are the one in Paris, the one in Lisbon, the one in Milan. This is my core research, actually. I developed the one in Lisbon and the one in Milan. I helped developing them. So I work on the impact of these real processes. Uh, this is a simulation. It is designed to teach uh, practitioners that have never done participatory budgeting, how to implement the participatory budgeting, but at the same time it has also has been used and it's being used uh, to introduce students uh, to the idea of co-design. Um, and uh, in particular the game follows exactly participatory budgeting, but instead of lasting a year or six months, it lasts two hours. It's divided in three phases. First, there is an ideation phase in which people in a small group, like this one, come up with ideas for a fictional city, the fictional city of Ampadil. Uh, once they have come up with these ideas, they upload them in a digital platform, because now most participatory budgeting are hybrid process supported by the digital platform. And then there is a moment of campaign in which the various tables try to convince the other tables to vote for their ideas. And then there is a vote via mobile phone. Um, this is the fictional map. Uh, and the updates that we did for this project was to focus it on green issues. We updated the map that was really confusing the previous version, simplified the rules. We created new role playing cards. Uh, they were more focused on the objective, which was through testing, we found that if we give too many details about the role that the person has to play, they actually get confused. Uh, because they only have two hours. This is not a role playing game which you have a week to prepare. You arrive and we give them a card with a little bit of information. So we really simplify the role play with the, the, with the objective of uh, generating some fun conflict. So there are three tables. 
One is the table of the citizens of downtown, one the table of the citizens of Middletown, and one the table of uptown. They are also divided in social classes: so the rich people in uptown, the middle class in the middle, and the poor people. And so we created this new set of cards that have been streamlined. Before there was way more information. Instead, now we have some information about their position with respect to climate change. So there are skeptical people, there are climate change, uh, so that, you know, they're like uh, environmentalist enthusiasts, and people that are sort of in the middle. Um, and then you can see there is some information about their jobs, so that people can start on a plane, and uh, just a line about some things that could be interesting. So this person is a conspiracy theorist. Sustainability claims by uptown are against us. So, this is a person who lives in downtown. Okay. And the other thing, we removed uh, some of the <laughs> roles that were very realistic but very boring to play. So, we have some silent introverts in the original version. But then we realized that it's true. Like in this situation, there are people that don't talk, but it's very boring to play. And so, we eliminate uh, that. This was the first test in Southampton. You can see me dressed like a, uh, a, a mayor. Uh, my tracker hat is actually somewhere. Um, and uh, those are the tables. Uh, and, uh, and those are actually the results of the vote. Um, so the research design, we designed two different research. Because we had some money, we, decide, uh, we, we designed a more intense research sort of uh, protocol with people, surveys, uh, interviews. Those were for the sort of uh, situation in which or we could pay the participants or it was a conference <laughs> with the researchers that were interested in the topic. And so we know that they would be, were okay to be studied or not. And instead we also developed a light version. Because when we're using, I use this in class regularly, or uh, when we use it like at international conference about other topics, uh, or with practitioners in the wild, we cannot ask them to spend an extra hour to do research. And so we have this dual approach. This is, this is the light version. These are some of the KPIs that we are studying. Empathy, because there is a literature about our plane that talks about uh, the, the, the effect of taking a role uh, to empathy, usability, efficacy, because some people are pushed uh, to basically talk more, and obviously bias and expansion. Um, so these, uh, the data collection phase is complete. The research is still ongoing because Vanessa that was the main driver behind the research and the baby, and so we are waiting her to come uh, to come back. But we had the first test with these new rules, with this new approach in, uh, in February, that's the one in the picture. Then we, and, uh, and that was just a sort of test to really optimize the game, introduce it to the Southampton team that had never seen it. And then we had a proper test in June, which we paid the participants, and we did the test at the collection. We were also invited to the recent conference, that was like two weeks ago, a Volving City conference. And, uh, and then we managed to do again the intense research because uh, they were all engineers and they were actually very happy to participate. So we managed to collect a lot of data, even if this is after the end of the project. Uh, and we present some preliminary results in the conference. So these are the, I'm summarizing the KPIs that Vanessa created the research questions, but Vanessa will be able to speak way more about this. So, uh, something about learning, obviously, but uh, this is uh, her, the specific core of this research, and it's about the relationship between uh, role acting in relation to identity. I don't know anything about that, so I'm not going to try to talk about that. Uh, but it's something that we think the main paper is going to talk about uh, this element of the program. Um, impact and dissemination. So, one of the objectives was really to introduce empathy in the UK. And, uh, and also continue its impact. So we are going, we're going to have been invited to a big event in Manchester that is organized by the Participatory Budgeting Unit. It's the network of uh, people doing participatory budgeting in the UK. 
that's the 22nd of November, and then in Southampton we're going to do another intense uh, evaluation with economists that are interested in the game for the Airplane Award. Then uh, these are other events around the world that have been invited, and I just got an email that the French <laughs> um, organization wants, uh, wants to do the game. In general, the game is fun. So, I mean, it's actually rare. Most of the simulation I developed were quite boring. And, and so, we, we, this one, most of the evaluation people had enjoyed it. In particular, with the extra element we added, because uh, thanks to Vanessa and Richard, we observed the game and we saw that certain moments were more fun than, than others, and so we expanded those. For example, now during the campaign phase, that usually was like, just the presentation people present, this is my idea, vote for me. Now we added the poor tracing phase, in which people go to the other tables and they have a crafting on their table, crafting material, they come up with flyers and things. And so, and people really enjoyed uh, that, something that we hadn't done uh, that before. Um, and uh, one of the objective was to build track record for a Horizon 2020 on games. Because so far, Empathy, the game was added to Horizon as a sort of secondary product. We were supposed to actually do the Horizon this year, but the head of the project, and it's a team of psychologists at the University of Florence, decided to go next year. And so now we are meeting in November uh, in Florence to see if there is an Horizon we can uh, apply to. But in general, there is a growing momentum around games in political science. Like before, I, I didn't even know where to publish <laughs> because games and serious games were not really a topic in, a, in my field. And now gamification became a buzzword in business, but now it's actually growing. And, and hopefully this will open up a, a lot of opportunities. And we use a lot of games in my department in teaching, but nobody's really tracking them. Like, it's almost the games are custom developed by each professor, and it's a pity. So it's part of this research agenda, slowly, is also to capture this richness that, almost, I don't know, at least in my department, I know five or six games that are being routinely used. 